So where does IR sit right now in 2021 in terms of CPT codes, work RVUs, and diagnosis codes? Well, I think we're getting a sense of where IR sits. And it has to do with this clinical practice of IR. So let's just, let's just you know, set the scenario here. So the basic goal of every physician in America is to create work RVUs. That's pretty much what you do. You get paid by creating work RVUs. You know, that is literally your job. How do you create work RVUs? Well, you basically execute a CPT code. A uh, CPT code basically is the actual thing that you're doing. So for example, if I'm dictating a case, a head CT, I'm, uh, I'm interpreting a head CT, that's a CPT code. CT of the head. Could be a CT of the abdomen and pelvis. It could be an MRI of the brain. All right, so that's a CPT code. If I am uh, placing a perm cath, that's a CPT code. That's insertion of a tunnel uh, hemodialysis catheter. All right? Or if I'm just seeing a patient and um, basically managing a condition, like perhaps I am uh, seeing them in consult for a kyphoplasty. So then I'm doing a clinical consult. Um, depending on exactly what you're doing during that clinical consult and how you define that clinical, uh, uh, how, that, how that clinic visit goes down and how you document that, that would fit a certain CPT code in the E&M classifications, evaluation and management. So to kind of back this up, where does IR sit now? IR sits in a place where we basically have access to three different families of CPT codes to generate our work RVUs. And basically, as an IR physician, you have to decide which of those families you want to use in order to create your work RVUs. Uh, traditionally, uh, interventional radiologists have basically focused on the uh, procedural CPT codes and the diagnostic CPT codes. Uh, but now, kind of with the you know clinical IR piece, we're trying to use those E&M codes. And I think it's really important to learn those codes and to execute those codes properly. Uh, and again, in an ideal situation, you're in communication with your billers and they understand that as a radiologist, you're gonna be using these codes. Now again, that's an ideal situation. It may not be the case. Um, you might be in a place where maybe your, uh, your compensation is not really driven by work RVUs or by what CPT codes you bill out. So in that case, you may not have so much control over that, which is, that's a good and bad thing. But again, um, ideally you are talking about practicing clinical IR and it's not just saying you're practicing clinical IR. It's not just saying you go up on the floor and see the patients. It's actually documenting a visit, a progress note, and making sure that that uh, is applicable to a certain CPT code that you are then ensuring that your billing company bills out. And that's, I think, what it truly means to be clinical IR. Um, so now again, there's always this idea of, you know, what should an IR do? And I think it sort of depends on the personality of the IR. Uh, I don't think that you have to be practicing in all three families of these CPT codes. Now, something to keep in mind is, again, if you're focused on creating as many work RVUs as possible, which also means you're focused on taking as many care of as many patients as possible, which also means that you're focused on taking care of or creating as much value or revenue as possible, all those things are the same, if that's your focus, then actually practicing IR the way it was traditionally practiced is probably makes the most sense because um, basically, I again, this is a, an opinion, but I think it's also a fact, a diagnostic radiologist is in a position to create the most amount of work, RVU, work RVUs per hour uh, relative to any other specialty. This is really why diagnostic radiologists are paid what they're paid. Basically per hour, you have a very efficient system of creating work RVUs, and it would be almost impossible to rival that with um, as, a, as a clinician. If you have to rely on E&M codes, well, there's only so many visits you can do in an hour. Um, there's only so fast you can room the patient. There's only so fast you can take vitals. There's only so many patients you can really have in your clinic at any one time. Um, so there's sort of a limit that you can reach with e &M codes, uh, procedural codes, the same thing. There's only so fast that you can pull a patient undergoing a procedure in and out of the room. 
But with diagnostic radiology, because of the computers, because of the PACs, because of the voice dictation, it has gotten so efficient that, again, you can create a stream of work RVUs just using your mind and your, and your mouth and the dictaphone. And again, if that's what you're focused on, if you're focused on work RVUs, which I would say there is a large focus on work RVUs, not just from physicians, but from entities, because basically entities, typically controlled by MBAs and um, accountants and also physicians, those entities have an interest in basically creating as much work as possible. Because um, again, the more work you're doing, the more patients you're taking care of. Again, it's not necessarily a bad thing, but if that is the interest, and then I think then you should, as an IR, think about that when you choose which of the three families that you're gonna be working with. So again, personally, I, I like doing procedures. I like also dictating cases, and I also like seeing patients clinically. I um, probably do the most work RVUs and procedures, and then probably diagnostic, and then probably clinical. Now, it could be different for someone else. Uh, that's kind of the fun of IR, is that you can make it any mix of the three that you want. If you really wanted to, you could have two to three days of clinic a week and just see patients for follow-up, and that could be your practice of IR. Um, but it could also be what a lot of people do, which is, procedures and reading cases in between, or it could be you're a teleradiologist reading cases and then you practice IR in a vascular lab when you're not reading cases. So again, that's the fun of IR. It's uh, a multitude of things. It's kind of whatever you want it to be. And uh, again, it's how, what, type of, how, what type of work RVUs do you want to create and how many of them per hour do you want to create? It's really up to you. Uh, I think it is nice for IR to have access to those three families. You're trained in all three areas, and you can decide what you want to do with that training. Currently, I'm using that training to dictate CTs. It's Rob on